Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I'm going to uh, give you a lecture about asthma exacerbation uh, by me, Professor Amina Abdel Maqsoud, uh, Chest Medicine Department, Mansoura University. As you know, asthma is a chronic inflammatory disorder of the airways in which many cells and many cell cellular elements will uh, play a role. Uh, this is a chronic inflammation, mainly eosinophilic inflammation, and characterized by airway hyperactivity. Hyperactivity means that the airways are hypersensitive to uh, many triggers, either specific or non-specific triggers. For example, the patient complain of uh, wheezes and bronchospasm when he is exposed to cold air current. This is a non-specific trigger. And also, he may complain that he is uh, suffering from dyspnea when he is exposed to dust, smoke, and so on. These are non-specific triggers. And also, we have specific triggers, for example, environmental triggers like pollen, mice, and so on. Okay? So, the patient will complain from recurrent episodes of wheeze, dyspnea, chest tightness, and cough particularly at a specific time in the day, uh, spe especially, especially in early morning and or, uh, or at night. And these uh, episodes are reversible. And this reversibility may be with treatment or without treatment spontaneously. Okay, this is the background of bronchial And the clinical picture includes chronic cough, chronic wheeze, recurrent wheeze, recurrent difficulty in breathing or dyspnea, and these symptoms worsen after uh, respiratory tract infections, especially viral infections, and allergic exposure. These symptoms occur in a specific time for, if, for every patient. So, for, so yeah, sometimes the patient complain at early morning, sometimes uh, during the sleep, sometimes uh, at night. Every patient has his specific type, and this patient has family history for atopic disease. The signs include, number one, no signs in between the attacks. The patient appears as normal, and during the attack, you will hear vesicular breath sound with prolonged expiration and audible wheezes with uh, auscultation and sometimes no wheeze and the patient has silent chest if we have severe bronchospasm and the course of asthma is characterized by variability periodicity and unpredictability as you will see later on now i'm going to revise with you the levels of asthma control the patient may be controlled without any symptoms and signs or partly controlled with twice attacks per a week or uncontrolled with many attacks per a week and in need for many treatments. And as I told you that he will experience exacerbations or attacks that varies from mild degree to severe or fatal degree. So we have many degrees. The mild degree means the patient is complaining of dyspnea uh, so with walking, and, uh, but he, he can lie down with this exacerbation. While in moderate, he will complain from dyspnea when he will talk, and he will feel difficulty when he is lying down and prefer sitting. In severe acute attacks, acute severe uh, asthma, he will complain from dyspnea at rest and he will not, cannot speak. And we have also many uh, differentiations, as you see in this table. We will uh, see the uh, the patient will be will be agitated and. You, in uh, severe asthma, uh, will be uh, will experience difficulty to speak, and he cannot say even words. 
and when asthma is fatal, the patient is drowsy or confused. Now, uh, the respiratory rate as a differentiating point between mild, moderate, and severe attacks. All the forms of attacks, uh, we will find increased respiratory rate. But in acute severe asthma, the respiratory rate will often more than 30 per minute. And I will give you uh, the normal respiratory rates in different age groups to, to know that if you have uh, abnormal increased respiratory rate or not. As you see, uh, when we have infancy, uh, we have uh, higher rates uh, than uh, adult rates, as you see uh, in this table. And in adult rate, uh, after uh, the first uh, year of life to five years, the uh, respiratory rate will be less than 40 per minute, and later on it will be less than 30 per minute. All uh, this sh background you should know. As uh, regard to accessory muscles of breathing, And in mild, uh, as regard the pulse and mild asthma, the uh, heart rate will be uh, more than 100. For moderate, from 100 to 120. For severe attack, it will be more than 120. And in fatal attacks, we may note bradycardia. And as regard pulses paradoxus is not present in mild attack and may be found in moderate or severe attacks. And as regard the uh, pulmonary function, uh, big expiratory flow rate, it will be uh, over 80% in mild attack and from 60 to 80% in moderate attack and less than 60% in severe attack. As regard blood gases, it will remain normal in mild attack and in moderate attack also will remain normal, but we will have some desaturation in moderate attack and in severe, we will have desaturation with decreased uh, oxygen tension less than 60 millimeter mercury. And sometimes we will have possible cyanosis, especially if it is fatal attack. As regards saturation, we have uh, saturation more than 95% in mild attack and ranging from 91 and to 95% in moderate attack and less than 90% in severe attack. As regard to severity, uh, the acute severe asthma, you should know the details for acute severe asthma because it's a special condition that you should manage because if you leave the patient with acute severe asthma, it, will may, it may progress to fatal attack and the patient may die. By definition, acute severe asthma is a progression of an attack of bronchospasm to a point where the patient is birthless at, at rest with difficulty to speech and the patient is unable to complete sentences in one press and may suffer from an anxiety and respiratory distress at rest. Near fatal attack means uh, the progression of acute severe attack to imminent respiratory arrest. The clinical picture of that acute severe uh, is that the same of acute severe asthma plus the patient is starting to get drowsiness, fatigue, and the head is going to be sagged to one side. We, the patient will get central cyanosis with paradoxical abdominal breathing and bradycardia, and we will get hypoxemia and sometimes we will get hypercardia. And the, it ends by this. Criteria for diagnosis of acute severe asthma, we will note special signs. As you, I told you before, signs will include use of accessory muscles of respiration. This was not present in mild or moderate attack. And the respiratory rate will be more than 30 per minute. This is not present in mild attack. And also the pulse will be more than 120 per minute. 
we, we may find, we will find para, pulses paradoxes and central cyanosis in very severe attack. As you know that acute severe asthma is not suffer, uh, patients are not sufferer from cyanosis until very late stages if the, if the attack progress to fatal attack. And the patient may remain for one or two days without cyanosis and using his accessory muscles of breathing with high rate and suffering from severe dyspnea and without cyanosis until late attacks when the uh, muscles begin to get fatigue and we will have fatal attacks then cyanosis will occur. By chest auscultation we will have inspiratory and expiratory wheeze and sometimes we have silent chest. By ABG, we will have decrease in BAO2 and normal CO2, normal CO2 tension, and sometimes hypocapnia. Uh, if you find the normal BACO2, this is dangerous. You should find hypocapnia. But if we have normal BACO2, this means that you have emergency in the patient will go to hypercapnia later on. And because we have rapid rate, if we have rapid rate, so we, we have wash. And if you have wash, you will have decrease of the BACO2 level. But if you have normal BACO2 level, this means that the patient is in danger. And later on, we will have hypercapnia. How to manage this attack? This is a very important item because all of us should know how to manage this acute severe asthma because if you leave the patient, as I told you, without treatment, you may die. Number one, you will give him oxygen and to correct this hypoxemia by nasal cannula or face mask, according to the saturation you find. Now, number two, you will give him uh, bronchodilators and you should use short acting beta 2 agonist, SABA and it is administered by nebulizer and uh, we, we, we use salbutamol solution and it is repeated every 10 to 20 minutes uh, according to response of the patient for one hour till the patient improve if the patient improve you stop but you will repeat it uh, for one hour till the patient improve by use of nebulizer we have, uh, uh, if we don't have nebulizer, we have what's called large volume spacers. This is an air chamber designed for uh, introduction of uh, meter to dose inhaler to uh, give the salbutamol solution by inhalation. And uh, it will replace the nebulizer if not available and will act like a nebulizer by using large volume spacers, okay? It is a, a plastic air chamber that you will fix the MDI in its uh, orifice. And uh, we have a small fa face mask is, uh, positioned on the mouse. And the patient will take many places in this chamber. Uh, and you get, uh, do a spray of the MDI inside this air chamber. It will work uh, and give good response. And also we have another bronchodilator is ibratropium bromide combination with the beta-2 agonist in the nebulizer. Uh, uh, it uh, give uh, uh, also good results. And we have a third arm from for bronchodilator, which is cyophilin. Cyophilin was used uh, in the past and is still used now. Uh, but you should know that it has many side effects and you should use it cautiously. Cyophilin loading dose uh, is uh, uh, you will weight your patient. It is, uh, it is the half of the patient body weight multiplied by 10 in IV infusion over uh, 30 minutes. This is the loading dose. And uh, then you will give maintenance dose in a dose of 0.5 milligram per kg per hour IV. And you should give corticosteroids per enteral should uh, be started to stop the allergic cascade and stop this process of uh, cytokine uh, release in and the cell uh, admission to the site of the lesion in asthma and to stop this uh, process of bronchospasm and uh, hypoxemia. And if you don't 
give corticosteroids, the, the progress of the asthma will not stop. And uh, don't tell yourself that you will manage by just bronchodilatation and the asthma will stop. This will not happen. You should stop this inflammation. Using the corticosteroids and acute severe asthma, use, you use corticosteroid as a parenteral route and a dose of 4 mg hydrocortisone, 4 mg per kg hydrocortisone, and you will uh, get result in within uh, four to six hours this will stop the attack okay also we give hydration plenty of fluids because the patient is mouth breather and will get dehydration and uh, this dehydration will give him sick very sick sputum and uh, will uh, increase the problem and if we cannot control this attack, the patient getting uh, by, uh, into a fatal attack, you may need mechanical ventilation. And uh, the indication for mechanical ventilation or intubation with, mass, with invasive mechanical ventilation includes if the patient starts to get drowsy or uh, if the patient is exhausted with imminent respiratory muscle fatigue, if we have paradoxical movement in the thoracoabdominal area, so you are in danger, and if you have cyanosis, if you have hypercapnia, and if there is history of previous mechanical ventilation and the patient is coming with an acute severe attack and started to get uh, fatigue. So uh, you will rapidly intubate the patient because if you don't do this, you will lose the patient. And uh, fortunately, bronchial asthma rapidly respond to mechanical ventilation and it's just one day invasive mechanical ventilation and the patient will get respiratory muscle rest and regain his respiratory muscle function. And it, uh, the attack uh, after the attack ends, it, he, he will be extubated rapidly and uh, will be survived. And uh, I will revise with you how to manage asthma exacerbation in the primary care in general. And you, number one, you will assess the patient. Is it mild or moderate attack? If it is mild or moderate attack uh, by examination, you will see the pulse is below 120 and his saturation is over 95% and his peak expiratory flow more than 50%. So you, you will start the treatment by short acting beta 2 agonist SABA and uh, using uh, MDI buffs and repeat it after every 20 minutes as I told you for one hour and uh, with, with giving him uh, oral corticosteroid brednisolone and at a dose of 40 to 50 milligram per day and uh, for children one to uh, two milligram per kg maximum 40 milligram per nizolone the patient will be controlled and uh, you uh, will not give him oxygen if the, if you have saturation more than uh, 95 percent but if you have severe attack you will manage uh, by more invasive maneuvers. As I told you, you, you should give oxygen, you should give hydration, you should uh, give all bronchodilator as you, uh, you available for you. And if we have response, it's okay. If we have uh, more deterioration, we will manage with drowsiness uh, or silent chest, you uh, should admit the patient to, to intensive care unit. And uh, if we have uh, facilities for uh, uh, management, management of this patient and with worsening, then the patient uh, will be admitted to the uh, ICU. If, if the patient in, improve and the symptoms improve, and uh, the saturation more than uh, 94% uh, uh, from air, uh, now he will complete his treatment with follow-up. And is, if the patient uh, is not improved, you will get back and uh, leave the patient in hospital till improvement. Now I'm going to uh, arrange for 
discharge I will give him uh, reliever or need and we'll give him controller treatment and we'll give him steroids for one week uh, if if you stop your steroid at this stage the patient the asthma will recur and uh, give him follow up after one week this table also uh, continue with us and uh, I'm going to give the patient uh, follow up and I should revise my patient uh, give him controller medication for one or two weeks or longer term for three months according to the persistence of symptoms so this period differs this is from GINA last GINA guidelines uh, this year uh, 2023 uh, this patient after discharge from hospital really uh, get control and medications you know control medication means uh, inhaled uh, long acting beta 2 agonist inhaled long acting steroids uh, for one or with with one week or systemic steroid for uh, uh, one or two weeks or long term uh, treatment for three months according to the severity of the case and recurrence of symptoms okay you should have a patient with only one or two exacerbation in a year to give him just short treatment but if you have a persistent exacerbation all over the year you will give him continuous treatment at least for three months and you should revise the risk factors for this patient and you will should you 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 should have an action action plan this action plan uh, if the patient has education about his treatment how to receive his inhalers and how to follow up and uh, if the patient needs regular medication for longer period or not and if the patient needs continuous treatment and longer medications uh, long, longer time for medication you will give him outpatient follow-up clinic monthly and you should think does the patient need allergic immunotherapy for stopping this progress of uh, immunological process that start asthma attacks every now and then and thank you